It's really important to have a basic off-grids comm setup that you can rely on. Whether you're preparing for some sort of grid down, emergency situation, or civil unrest, so you can communicate with family, friends, and other people that you might be working with to help keep you and your neighborhood safe during an SHTF situation. Today I'm going to be walking you through my setup and explaining why I chose the items that I did. Keep in mind that I'm not a radio expert, but I did do a lot of research when putting this setup together, and it has been a work in progress and evolving over the last few years, but this is how it stands today. Anyways, thanks so much for stopping by the channel, and hopefully this will give you guys a few ideas about how to set up your comms. As always, there will be links down in the description below which will help me make a few extra cents from Amazon and better yet drop a comment down below and let us know what you're doing for your comms or if you have any ideas on how to make this setup better. Alright so you all have probably seen typical radios like these and what they are are FRS radios and these are very cheap but you're also quite limited in range especially if you don't have line of sight. My wife and I tested these out and we live in a pretty densely populated suburban area and we were unable to communicate with each other past a few blocks which might be okay if you just need to communicate communicate a very short distance, but if you think you might need longer range, you should definitely look into getting something with a bit more power. And the one I recommend to people most often, and what we're running now, is the Baofeng UV5R. This is a dual band radio and you can transmit on VHF and UHF. So these are hands down the most budget friendly option on the market and they're really affordable. And at the time of making this video, you can pick one of these up for about $22 on Amazon or about the same price on AliExpress. These are great because you can pick up a handful of them for pretty cheap and they do have a ton of different features which make them more appealing to advanced users. One of the first upgrades that you should probably make right out of the box is the antenna and the one I'm using is the Nagoya 771R, which is the retractable version of the 771, which is much more convenient to carry and pack into your kits, and this will significantly improve your range over the stock antenna to well over one mile in urban environments, and significantly further when you have a clear line of sight. There's a lot of different factors that will influence your range, but overall your performance will be much better compared to the stock antenna, and this will cost about $21. Typically, Baofangs will come with a stock battery, and they have an 1800 milliamp hour capacity capacity and charge with a base station and will typically run for about a day or two depending on how much you use them. These batteries are pretty cheap and you can pick up a handful for a pretty good price at about $9.99 each, but they do rely on a bulky wall charger cradle to charge and in my opinion there are a lot better options out there. I picked up the BL5L battery from the Meerkit radio store on Amazon and not only does it have a much larger capacity at 3800 milliamp hours, but it also comes with a USB cable which does make charging much more convenient and this will run you about $24 and it will bump up the runtime to about five days. You could keep a power bank in your kit to charge the radio battery and some other electronics in your kit or you can even add a small solar panel to your kit and keep your battery charged up off the grid. A setup that I really like for small USB electronics is the Sunjack 15 watt panel and if you want to learn more about that I'll link to a review I did about a year ago down in the description. Another option that I also keep as a backup is a battery pack which takes six AA batteries. This setup is not rechargeable but you could use rechargeable AA's and this type of battery is very common and typically they have about a 10 year shelf life and they will most likely outlast the rechargeable batteries we looked at previously. So if you want to add a backup and some longevity to your setup you might want to consider adding a few of these as well and the cost is about $11 each plus the cost of the batteries. The next few items we're going to touch on are going to be more geared towards those of you who are looking to make your comp setup much more portable and easy to use on the go and would be good if you wanted to run this setup from a plate carrier, a battle belt, or a backpack and might have more use in tactical SHTF situations. This is the Baofeng push to talk mic which makes it much easier for you to talk and basically what it allows you to do is communicate through the mic by pushing the button on the side and and these start at about $10 on Amazon. This one also has an auxiliary output. So what you can do is plug in an auxiliary cable and connect it to earphones, which brings us to our next item, which is my ear protection from Glorifire. These are basic shooting headphones with active noise canceling. But the reason I picked these up in particular is because they have an auxiliary input. So I can connect them to the PTT handset with an auxiliary cable. So in addition to protecting my ears, they integrate really well into my comp setup. As far as shooting ear protection goes, these are relatively comfortable and do a pretty good job of protecting your ears. And they're one of the more affordable ANSI setups with an aux input which is the main reason I picked them up and these are available on Amazon for about $46. If you are concerned about keeping a low profile and not giving away your location with noise you're definitely going to want to run your radio through a headset. Another thing to keep in mind is that once the Nagoya antenna is extended it's pretty long so it could get in your way depending on how you plan to run your radio. So one thing that might
might be beneficial to you is an extender, which will give you a bit of extra flexibility on how you configure and where you run your antenna. And these are another relatively cheap item at about $10. Anyways, it would be great to hear what your plan's comms are and what kind of setups you guys are running. And if you're running any of these items and how they're working out for you. So please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and be sure to smash the like button if you want me to discuss more topics like this one in the future.